you know sometimes i'm muted right at the start of these streams i didn't make my tea in time i heard the uh the 60 second music start and then the kettle wasn't boiled yet and uh the tea bag is in and the milk's on the side and then i had to come back and and uh meet all you lovely people tuning in so how are you all doing today here i am without tea we might take a quick five minute break halfway through if i'm uh if i'm really dying, but I do have water, so we're all good. Right, so um, no background music today, unfortunately, apart from obviously the um, the intro roll, because um, my PC completely died, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, last Friday. Uh, yeah, it was Friday. Um, I booted it up in the morning and uh, both hard drives failed and I think I'm pretty sure the motherboard is gone so it's in for in for repairs. That does mean you get like a new UI which I whipped up uh, today which uh, I'm experimenting with so we'll see hopefully you like it if you do like it I'll um, I'll, I'll keep it and uh, 
and hopefully we're not having too many sync issues but apologies because i usually run my music from my laptop but now i'm streaming from my laptop and trying to mix the sound and then cut the voice to my headphones because i can't stand the hearing myself speak is um too much uh audio engineering for me if you're an audio engineer then uh get in touch you can help me out a little bit but uh but all good all right so let's take some questions um so will this be recorded recorded yeah if you go to the youtube channel uh for the cyber mentor um all of our live streams are on there under under the live tab so uh yeah everything is on youtube um so you can come back and you know skip my preamble and get to the good stuff uh as much as you like so all good and the the previous streams are of course uh of course there as well what's up dan good to see you thanks for tuning in how are you doing today it's probably definitely like top three epic beards like amongst people that i know definitely he's he's up there um, for me, like once it gets a bit too long, I just, it's too much to deal with for me. Like it gets, gets a little bit too itchy and, you know, but, uh, respect for, for the dedication. Cause it takes a long time to get it that big, uh, for sure. Um, what's up Chameleon? What's up Andrew? How are you doing? We've got Zach in the chat as well. So, um, he can answer, uh, lots and lots of, uh, IT questions, uh, as well. And, uh, all right. So here's a question. Some advice before PJPT. Um, okay. Uh, I can give you some advice. <laughs> um, so don't, don't stray too far from the course, right? Because everything you need to pass is in the course. So if you see something crazy, uh, like you scan something or you find something and then there's like some really obscure like CVE that's posted on somebody's blog and there's no real like official exploit for it. Probably not the way. So keep it simple. Uh, set yourself a timer. So take a break every, you know, maybe for an exam every 45 minutes. Just honestly get up from your PC, make yourself a cup of tea, go to the bathroom, whatever. Um, but make sure you just you step away from your computer every 45 minutes um yeah and i think outside of like you know not going too crazy outside of the course material take regular breaks um yeah try and think logically you know don't don't overthink stuff i think that's the um those are the main pieces of advice uh pieces of advice that i can uh that i can give you so all good um, yeah, we're going to do some, I think the box we're doing today, it's been a while since I looked at it. And also, um, I, I haven't got the points for it, so I need to, I need to get the flags. Uh, we're going to do Valley on, um, try hack me. And if I recall, there's a couple of different previous techniques, uh, that we're going to show off today. So if you have a try hack me account, let me check if it's a free room or not. So yeah, it's a free room. So if you just search for Valley, uh, once we get started, you're welcome to hack along and then all good. This is definitely not something that happens. <laughs> I I can't imagine anything worse than staring myself down. I think that would um that would freak me out too much. Especially since I don't know, once you get into your thirties, everything is like I don't know, I look so tired all the time. I feel so tired all the time. It's um yeah, I'm still living. I'm still pretending I'm in my 20s. Uh, at least that's what I tell myself uh, uh, every morning. Am I top 1% though? Nope. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. And actually, a little while ago, um, I was like, okay, this month I'm getting top 1%. And then I did like a whole day of try hack me. And then I didn't touch it for like a month. <laughs> so I'm not top 1%. Where am I? Uh, let me Let me check. Hold on, I can tell you. You can put your guesses in the chat as to percentage you think I am in 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 try hack me. It's single digits. I'll give you that. It's not. Um, we're not. We're we're inside. Like you know, the top nine percent obviously because that's single digits. But I'll um, I'll leave that for now, and you can uh, you can put your guesstimates in there. But I'm not, not not one percent. Yeah, I could I could do with more coffee, but in the UK it's like five PM now. So if I do that, then I won't be able to sleep. 
And uh, I'm a morning person, so I get up, you know, 6 a.m. every morning, pretty much on the dot every morning. And um, uh, yeah, if I can't sleep, then I'll have a bad day. And then, you know, I got I got YouTube videos to make, which making YouTube videos when you're tired is is honestly it's the worst. It's it's you need to have energy and like, you know, and be awake and alert. So for sure. Um, all right, let me keep scrolling down. Oh, three. We've got a 3% here. That's optimistic. Jay says 6%. Not quite. It's somewhere between the two. <laughs> Top five. Yeah, here we are. So yeah, I think I'm 5% at the moment is the... Um, the problem is, is I solve a lot of stuff and then I just don't submit the flags because I'm just like, ah, this box looks fun and then I'll do it. And then, you know, um, so <laughs> zero is also single digit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm in the top, top zero percent, a hundred. Uh, this is definitely, definitely where I need to be. <laughs> um, all right, let me keep scrolling, scrolling down. Oh, this is a this is a cool a cool question. All right, so um, just so you guys know, uh, tomorrow Tiberius has a special guest, uh, a friend of his, um, who's coming on um, uh, onto his stream, and he streams maybe two hours after I do, but tomorrow, so in twenty six hours time, um, tune back in because his special guest uh, is like a top fifty bug crowd bug bounty hunter. Does that make sense? What's the, like, how do you call yourself when you're a bug bounty hunter? It's just bug bounty hunter. I'm going to call them like buggers. No, that sounds terrible. <laughs> bug hunters or something like this. Um, so yeah, he's like top 50 bug bounty and uh, he's, he's a special guest coming on tomorrow. So if you have bug bounty questions, um, definitely tune in uh, tomorrow and he'll be able to answer them all. But as for like recon on a, on a target, um, I mean, it never really stops. It's always like a cycle, right? And my kind of general, I, I look at it more as like enumeration. We're always doing like recon, then application analysis, then hopefully exploitation, and then hopefully reporting. But you know, when you, when you do this, you can't recon the whole site all at once and then just completely leave it. I would say um you know set yourself some like goals or expectations or or be methodical and follow a checklist and once you're kind of like once you're out of ideas step away look at something else do some recon on another part of the site or or a different target and then maybe circle back to it to make sure you haven't missed anything i think that's probably a good way to do it but there's no like clear line in the sand uh for sure to uh to do this so so yeah, all good. Um, yeah, I think there's a top. There's a lot of top one percent try hack me people on the TCM Discord. Um, lots of people putting in the solid work for sure, which is awesome achievement. It's it's tough. Yeah, this is it. The uh, Pokemon trainers, which is the um, you know the bug catchers, are uh, always a pain early on. Oh no, my message didn't highlight. Did it highlight? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, the bug catches early on. If you pick the wrong Pokemon, that poison, that will catch you. Catch you out. Um, let me keep scrolling. <laughs> um, why so serious? Am I serious? Or are we talking about somebody else? I'm not, I'm not the most serious person in the world. I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty chill. It's all good. Yeah, so we're going to do Valley today. Um, you'll see, I'll show you once once we get started uh, in like 15 minutes or so, um, we'll we'll jump into the box. Uh, but it's good to, um, to catch up with all the questions, catch up with you guys, let everybody have a chance to, to ask, to ask away and then, and then all good. I've just hacked my cat. Did you like? <laughs> I've got a flipper zero, and I was reading the uh, the chip in my cat, 
um which is not very exciting you just kind of put it on then you just like bloop and then it gives you the id and it's like okay that's cool done <laughs> which which is you know it's fun to do but um did you do something else maybe maybe i've seen some crazy gps uh tracking of, of cats and things like this so so all good um, what would you recommend to someone who knows many coding languages, Windows Linux, th three CompTIA sets, and also felony conviction? Uh, stop trying for this industry. I don't think generally, uh, I mean, I'm not sure about the country, um, because different countries are different. I think the, the felony problem comes in where if you're applying to big companies or companies that have strict HR processes, um that can be difficult uh or if like you're applying for a visa for example they're pretty strict on like on like felonies um but i think if you go for like a small or medium-sized enterprise um you're probably going to have more luck i think because they're more open to understanding you as a candidate and looking at the whole picture whereas if you go for a big corporation they're just going to be like that's a that's a red flag nope and then they'll just they'll just move it aside because it's easier for them to not deal with it if that makes sense so um yeah i would definitely try for like small medium medium enterprise but honestly i don't think it's any different from any other industry um that if you're trying like if you're trying to enter as like a developer or if you're trying to enter any of the other tech um positions i don't, I don't think that makes a, a big difference if that makes sense got to find the right organization um which is true for for everything really we've got to find organizations that suit us and that are willing to kind of like work with us right so that's the uh that's the trick um what sort of roadmap would you recommend to an absolute beginner like you keep hearing about OWASP but I go to the website itself and it's all a bit overwhelming yeah so this is a great question um so I wouldn't just like browse uh, resources like that. Hold on, let me let me log into my VM and let's go over. So what I would say is if you're just starting out, find a course. It doesn't even matter, right, what really the course is, but just follow it. Like don't jump around too much and don't don't go too crazy because what you actually need to think about is just just um, absorbing lots of lots of knowledge. And if I come to here. Uh, what I recommend for most people is take a, you know, beginner friendly course. So either come to um, YouTube and there's like the 15 hours of hacking um, from Heath, which is which is really good. Um, but here you've got like uh, introduction to cybersecurity. If I come, my VM's being really slow for some reason. Do, 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 do. Check out these learning paths um on on try hack me and this is probably your best bet to get you where you need to be as quickly as possible without leaving major gaps uh in your knowledge so for example you can probably if you're a complete beginner introduction to cybersecurity. but if you've got like some tech skills maybe you've got like background as a developer or sysadmin or you're, you're pretty tech savvy then maybe the junior penetration testing path is is also quite good uh you can probably skip this this one like this is like got some career stuff in it you don't need to worry about that right now um or the pre-security one again is kind of from zero but one if you have tech skills then just jump into the junior uh pen tester one and honestly right that's the the best thing to do and also if you just reading OWASP it's kind of like um there's not really much point uh, because you won't remember it you're not kind of like really learning if that makes sense so if you come to here um, there are some great rooms so for example here we've got the OWASP top 10 and you can come in and you can go through this room and there'll be labs and things like this and it'll step you through everything uh, that you need to know so you can come through read about something do a practical lab and then add that to your knowledge. And the other thing is, is definitely uh, take notes as you go. So, so don't forget. But honestly, that's that's the most efficient way to get uh, to get up to speed. Because if you bounce around between online resources, who knows what you're going to pick up? <laughs> it really, it's 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 a gamble. Uh, whereas if you just follow a path, then you're you're all good. So, so that's um, that's the way to do it uh, for sure. Um, is PJPT a good place to get started? Uh, if you want to be a penetration tester and you have some technical experience, yes. 
uh, 100%, this is a great place to start. And sounds like you do have um, some experience like laptop repair, imaging, setting up, troubleshooting. Ah, I sh you should have been here last week my, when my PC died. <laughs> I've sent it off for, for repair because unfortunately my, uh, my hardware knowledge and repair knowledge is not that great. Uh, I'm more of a software person. But, you know, um, yeah, PJPT is, is perfect for, for, for this. So um, enjoy, enjoy the PEH and, uh, and the exam. Um, how much networking is sufficient to begin in cybersecurity? Is there an answer to this? Because, okay, the answer is it depends. Um, my networking knowledge isn't that great, but I still work in cybersecurity and have done for almost 10 years. I'm going on 10 years, I think, this year, or maybe next year, I can't remember. Um, but I work have worked predominantly in application security, but I have done like instant response and some other stuff and, and security engineering as well. Um, I would say you need to be comfortable like understanding basically how networking works, um, understand a bit of subnetting, um, and just make sure you feel confident that when you're presented with like, you know, networking information or a network diagram that you can figure it out. Not, oh, you need to know everything off the top of your head you need to be able to know where to go to find information. And I think then you're basically all good. And if you feel like it's holding you back whilst you're working in cybersecurity, then you can study more and you can work more on it. Or if you are uh, if you become a network security engineer, for example, then of course your networking is going to need to be much, much deeper. But honestly, start with the fundamentals and then add as you need to add. Don't be like, oh, I need like my CCNA to become a web app pen tester because you don't. Um, God. Yeah, it's, it's like that. So learn, learn the fundamentals and you're good to go. Um, all right, let me keep... There's some really great questions in here. I'm not sure we'll have time to get to all of them, so apologies, but um, we'll do our best. Um, this is a good question. Um, generally speaking, no, but it depends on the CTF. Don't jump into like Insomniac expecting to be able to do stuff if you have no prior experience. But if you're looking at things like Picto CTF or if you're looking at like Try Hack Me, um, then no, you don't. There, there's lots of beginner friendly CTFs out there. So, um, so and, and this is a legit way to learn because I think a lot of people, a lot of gatekeepers are like, ah, you need, you need lots of experience before you can do this. You don't. You can figure it out as you go. But um, just be aware that, you know, you'll probably have to, it's going to be tough at the start and you'll probably have to do lots of reading, um, read lots of write-ups, you know, follow, follow walkthroughs and things like that, because there'll just be things that you just don't know. Unfortunately, it's not something, you know, that you can just brute force and figure out all the time. Sometimes there's just a gap and reading lots of write-ups and, and doing, you know, CTFs that are at your level is a good way to do that. So, um, but yeah, check out Picto CTF. This is a good place to start, I think. And easy boxes on on like uh, Try Hack Me is also um, also good. Um, yeah, I think as Paul says, focus on blind spots in the chat. This is definitely a good um, a good piece of advice. I'm switching between questions and chat, so doing my best to multitask. Not something that I'm I'm known for, but uh, all good. Um, let me keep scrolling down. Uh, okay. Interesting question. How do I keep a balance of learning enough blue and red skills? Okay. Um, honestly speaking, like, I don't... If, if, if you understand technology, right? Like, if you understand how Active Directory works... And then you understand about misconfigurations and you also understand about, you know, logging and events and, and, and things like this. Like tying it all together, as long as you understand the technology, it's not that difficult. There's actually really no such thing as, as red and blue and all of this other stuff. What, what exists is the technology and how it functions. And, you know, when we send a weird payload, something weird happens. doesn't matter what your perspective is you know, things happen inside the network. And if, if you can understand how those things happen, then you know everything. So don't 
don't don't don't try and like pigeonhole everything too much on like red side and blue side. Uh, what I would say is if you're if you're more if you're like a blue teamer, if you're more on, on the defensive side, that should be your main focus. And then maybe just supplement it with like spend 20 percent of your time um, doing offensive security. Uh, that's that's what I'd say. Um, so that and that 20 percent, even though it doesn't sound like a lot, um, will give you like quite a lot of benefit, like, you know, the whole 80, 20 rule and things like this, because everything is diminishing returns. So if you if you spend an hour doing something, you're going to get a lot of benefit. But if you spend 10 hours doing it, you're not going to get 10 times the benefit. So just spend, you know, like 10, 20 percent of your time um, uh, doing red team stuff. And don't go crazy on like, you know, the CTF spending all day trying to solve a hack the box machine. Um, look at write-ups, go through walkthroughs, learn attacks and how they work, because that's going to be more useful for you. For example, um, in a recent video, we were doing some stuff and like, if we go adsecurity.org, this has a lot of really great um, articles, not just on um, like how to detect and, and prevent attacks, but also how to how to like pull them off as well. So you know if you're if you're a blue teamer, this is a great resource because it shows you how to protect against them, but also um, will give you like a lot of stuff on you know how do you actually do the attack, and then you can do it, and then you understand how it works, and then you can detect it. But honestly speaking, everything really comes down to understanding how things work, not really like understanding how to hack. There is really no how to hack. It's just using and abusing technology, I think, in a in a nutshell. Good question, though. Um, tricky one to answer. Um, do I recommend learning Python and Linux before doing the Try Hack Me learning path? No, I don't think you need to learn anything before you jump into stuff. Do it at the same time. Right. That's the that's the thing is, is you don't need to be like, I now know programming. I now know networking. I now know this. Now I'm allowed to become a pen tester. Don't, don't do that. Just be like, hey, I've got this problem or like I'm going to do like 20 minutes of programming a day to try and improve my Python skills. And then I'm going to follow this try hack me path. And if there's something I don't understand, I'm going to go away and I'm going to learn about it. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to continue. Don't don't worry. Don't set yourself like gates. Um, it's it's not a, an effective way to learn, at least not in my opinion. Um, so honestly, just dive into the path. Um, if you can supplement your learning, obviously don't try and learn ten things at once. But if you can supplement your learning with like you're doing a little bit of programming um, or a little bit of of um, networking, for example, uh, then that's great. But honestly, like the learning paths are designed to teach you those things as well, and you can. Like I say, follow the path and supplement. Don't don't not do the path because you don't feel like you're not a master Python programmer, if that makes sense. Um, Security Plus Cert's pretty good. It's pretty well recognized. Um, it covers a lot of different topics. The nice thing about it is it covers a lot of jargon and also like gives you a really good like uh, feeler in lots of different areas, uh, which is really nice. So if you're not a hundred percent sure that you want to go into like pen testing, for example, maybe you're interested in like malware or maybe you're interested in like some blue team stuff and i think it's important to understand the fundamentals of all these things as a well-rounded security engineer and the learning path uh sorry security plus is going to help you uh get started with that and also as much as lots of people don't uh, like it or find it boring regulatory compliance and things like that really really important because uh as a security person you're going to have to deal with business people and so you need to understand their world of um uh, regulations and compliance and maybe a little bit of things like GDPR and privacy and, and stuff like that. So it doesn't hurt to know the basics uh, in those areas uh, as well. Um, I don't get up every morning to think about GDPR, but it's it's useful to know. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's for sure. Um, all right, let me come back to the chat for a second because I've been I've been hanging out in the the starred questions. Um, for for a minute and then I'm gonna come all the way down and just see how you're all doing. Here we are. I can see yeah loads of the team also chiming in. So props to Zach who is IT career questions for also helping us out and uh, answering all your questions. 
Um, much appreciated. Um, course suggestion after CH. Uh, I mean, you could do like PMPT or OSCP. If you want to do pen testing, those are to like, you know, um, a couple of good ones. If you want to be more on like the, um, like you want to do internal penetration testing and you want to be confident day one about Active Directory and testing, go more for PMPT. If you want to really hammer your troubleshooting skills, then maybe go for OSCP. And obviously OSCP is, is really, really widely recognized. So um, the choice is yours, really. Uh, also depends on like budget and time and, and other things. Um, but yeah, definitely kick it up a notch. Um, uh, I would say whatever you do, do something that's hands-on. Don't Once you've got your CH, don't take another certification that's like multiple choice questions. Um, take something that has a practical exam, whatever whatever you decide to do, because that will round out your, your resume or CV, for, for, exact, uh, for example. Um, all right, so... Two more questions, and then we'll we'll dive into this um, into this box. Oh gosh, I just saw a really important one from Chameleon. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down, and I'm gonna answer <laughs> Chameleon's question last. Um, how do we test for IDOR and bug bounty? Uh, it's pretty simple, really. So most of the time, uh, if you see an ID in in the query string or in the body of a request, you can just change this to another value and see what happens. Um, if you're A-B testing, if you're testing, like, uh, for example, you've got account slash 123, create another user that's account slash 456, and then see if you can access slash 456 from, from like, account A, if, if that makes sense. So, so pretty straightforward. We cover this quite a bit in, um, in our course, and it's, it's well covered on TryHackMe as well. So definitely worth reading up. But IDOR's pretty simple to find. You just have to have a bit of, like, uh, a bit of a sense for it to, you know, as soon as you see an ID, can you can you manipulate uh, that ID, if that makes sense? Um, all right, let's see if I can find this question that I saw pop up um, on the chat. Oh, thank you for the super chat, TC. Much appreciated. Yeah, great to have you here. Oh, it's a super sticker, sorry. <laughs> I'm on Restream, so I don't get all the information from all the platforms, so sorry about that, but that's awesome. Um, all right, tacos or barbecue? I am a taco fan. Yeah, 100%. Nothing wrong with barbecue, but if you give me tacos, I'll be a happy British person, <laughs> whatever that is. Um, so, yeah. That's uh, now you know the answer to my secret account question. When you when you do reset password and and it asks you what my favorite food is, you've got a you've got a hint. Um, it's not actually tacos, but it's it's similar. So um, so all good. All right, so let me spin up this machine and yeah, the one we're doing today is this one. So we're gonna do we're gonna do Valley. And I'm not logged in on my VM, but that's okay. It doesn't matter too much. Um, and we just got a couple of flags. I like machines that just require flags, and they don't give you kind of like. I mean, I I see the value of like the walkthrough ones for sure, hundred percent. But for me, I just like to find flags. It's it's fun. Uh, so difficulty easy. So hopefully we won't be doing anything too crazy. But you never know. Let's see. I've been uh, faked out by uh, Try Hack Me before where like, it's like, oh, this box is easy. And it just wasn't. And then sometimes the other way around as well. I've done a couple of insane boxes and they're, they're pretty straightforward uh, as well. They just tend to be um, obscure and that's uh, rather than difficult, which maybe they're the same thing. I don't know, but... Uh, but all good. Yeah, so if you if you do have more questions, if you keep dropping them in, we'll try and keep starring them. And I'll try and like every 20 minutes or so, we'll try and cycle back and answer one or two um, as we go as well. Uh, so all good. Yeah, this is, all right, this is 100% truth um, uh, from figure eight. Easy box is sometimes a six hour journey, sometimes 30 minutes. And sometimes the insane boxes are like a 10 minute journey. 
and sometimes they're a month you know it really depends so it's all uh, all good all right um let's this is a fresh vm because like i say my pc died so let's make a uh directory called ctfs and let's call uh call one valley and let's just see if we can ping the box and then we grab the ip let's not do what we did last week and ping ourselves and be like hey why can't we <laughs> why can't we scan ourselves <laughs> that was like yeah probably the most most embarrassing uh thing i've done on stream um in a while but it's you know we live and learn, so it's all, all good. Um, so let's do. Um, let's start with Mmap. We might switch to Mascan later if we need to cover more ports. Um, whoops. Let's just do dash a, and output normal scan dot initial, and let's just see what it comes back with. Um. What password manager do I recommend? Um, so I don't think I have a recommendation because I haven't done research and analysis. So this is like, you know, but I use uh, one pass, which is like the not one password for everything. The one that's confusingly called uh, one pass. So all good. Um, all right, so 22 SSH, pretty standard, 8.2 P1, and then we've got 80 open as well. So let's take a look at what's running on the web service. Gosh, this box is, uh, by box, I mean my VM is really slow. I might have to give it some more uh, RAM at some point. If it gets horribly slow, I'm going to reboot it and give it a bit more RAM. Yeah, gosh. Oh, that's why it's only got two gig of RAM. Jesus. <laughs> Who set this up? <laughs> this is the worst. Um, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try and uh, live with it for now, but, um, but we'll see. Um, okay, so we have this photo valley with, oh, you know, right. Okay, so I started off my career as a web developer and nothing makes me more upset than horizontal scroll bars. <laughs> I have nightmares about these things because I, I spent so much time like fixing websites that have this horrible issue of, of horizontal scroll bars. And yeah, apologies if you can hear the cats. You know, feral cats from from abroad. That's that's what I have to live with. <laughs> I fed them like an hour ago, so I don't know. They're probably just bored, but I'll play with them later. So it's uh, it's all good. Yeah, I love them too, but um, sometimes they do test my patience <laughs> uh, a little bit. Um, all right, so let's take a look at this. And looks like, I mean, they're not loading very fast. Not the most optimized site in the world, but... I think we can just, yeah, if we hover over, I don't know, maybe the text is too small, but if you look in the bottom left, we might even have an IDOR issue. Um, person who was asking about IDOR earlier, apologies, I've forgotten your name. You were somewhere in the, in the thing. But um, uh, so, yeah, we can see like static dash one, static dash two. So if we take a look at this, we can just see this image. But here we probably want to fuzz this uh, to see whether there's anything that um, anything interesting. So what I'm going to do is come back here and just um, let's do vim numbers.py and just whip up a quick script and just do for whoops for i in range one to let's say like 200. Um, and then I'm just going to print I like this, save this. And if we run this, um, if we do Python 3 numbers.py, you can see that. And then we're just going to output this to numbers.txt. And we can just head the numbers to check that they, whoops, 
uh, the check the numbers are correct here, and then we can just tail it as well. So we know our, our file is all good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use wfuzz to basically just brute force um, 1 to 200 to see, to see what we can find uh, in here and see whether any of these are interesting or like interesting giveaways or whatever. Because it might be like there's 1 to 20, but then, then there might be like a 97. And then the 97 is like a stego challenge or something like this. This is my um, CTF mindset that's that's going on. So so let's just wfuzz dash u. Oops. And then I'm just going to grab this. And then the word list is just going to be numbers dot text. And we'll just see what we can find. And then we should be all good. Why is it giving me four of fours? I don't really want to see the four of fours, but wait a second. Uh, so eight, four. Two, 17, 14, 6. There's no crazy outliers from what I can see. But let's try again, but with like, okay. User share word lists. Uh, let's try just a common, see what we can find. Ah, how do we filter four or fours? Uh, is it FS 404 or no, FS is filter size. How do we filter the response code? We might have to check the help file. Uh, if somebody in the chat knows, let me know. Uh, we only want to see 200s basically. filter show hard responses using the specified filter or expression so can we filter 200s with that oh uh wait is it dash ss oh this is regex within the content pre-filter we don't want that does somebody not Oh, F dash FC. Yeah, this is it, isn't it? Dash FC. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. Is it like this? No, that didn't work. <laughs> um, let me let me Google. This is probably the quickest way. Um, actually, let's. I've got a better idea. Instead of, let's use um, F, F, U, F. Let's see what this does. Yeah, F, F, U, F is better because it does the auto filtering uh, on, on 404s. So, so we're all good. Ah, yeah, dash HC 404. I think this is, this is probably correct. I always get confused with like the WFuzz flags uh, and the F, F, U, F flags. Uh, and things like this. Um, okay. All right. So challenge number one for the chat. Which of these is suspect? And I'll give you, I'll give you all a minute to answer. I've just spotted one that um, is, is very strange, but I can give you all uh, a second to answer. Yeah, I think a couple of you have got it already. Xerox F69, Ash. Oh, number four. Why number four? Maybe it's hard to see. So this one is is a number, but the size is way off compared to the others. So this is pretty um, 
pretty suspicious. So let's take a look at this one. There we go. Dev notes, classic, uh, classic CTF. Um, so this endpoint remove dev. So add wedding photo examples. Redo. This could be a stego um, hint. Redo the editing on number four. Um, but let's uh, let's check this one first. And haha, we found we found the secret way in. So all good. Um, so let's just try admin admin. Hmm. This is also oh sorry I'm gonna do and when he calls one since since I work with Tiberius now I'm not allowed to use or when he calls one it's good advice for sure but I keep forgetting this is a terrible bad habit of mine I always type or when he calls one like instinctively um interestingly when we click the button here. Um, nothing happens, right? The page doesn't refresh. We don't get any behavioral response. So one of two things happens. One is um, the form isn't submitting or the form is being handled by JavaScript, basically. So we could have, you know, two things. And uh, what we can do is we can come into here and check the network tab. Wait for it to reload because my machine has no RAM. Test it again. And you can see that there's no network request. Nothing happens when we click this button. So if we inspect this a little bit more. <coughs> excuse me. I'm just choking. Um, we can see there's no action um, attribute on this form. So it's not actually doing anything. That doesn't mean it's not necessarily working because we could have some JavaScript that's picking up the whoops this home button submission. But this form, from an HTTP perspective, is like a dead form. It's not doing anything. So whoops, I did not mean to click. Go back. Don't go back home. No. Oh uh, no. Hold on. Let me come back again. Uh, this form here is is like a dead form. But we get this invalid username and password. So we've probably got some some JavaScript to look at. So we can just come into dash u and we have this button.js. Get the button element. This looks like some animation stuff. We've also got dev.js. And this looks much more suspicious. So we've got like, yeah, the invalid username stuff. And it looks like down here we have some creds. So here we are, and this is the, so the username cmdev and password equals California. Um, it sends us to this location here. So what I'm going to do is let's just open up. Uh, I use mousepad. Let's do this in Vim for fun. Um, Vim notes. Let's grab this. Oh, no, I didn't. Ah. I press Control Shift C, like copying from terminal, rather than Control C, because we're in the um, uh, what was it? CM Dev and California. To be fair, oh, California. I can't spell California for some reason. Here we go. All right. Um, it's always best to copy and paste passwords. Otherwise, like me. <laughs> mistakes will be made uh, unfortunately so let's take a look at this we're still viewing source but that's okay and uh, stop reusing credentials so this California password might be reused for other user accounts so we can keep that in the back of our minds um, stay up to date on patching it might be a CVE or a kernel exploits um, change FTP ports to normal ports we probably missed something in our initial nmap scan. So let me set up another scan quickly, and then I can come back and my headphones just turned off, and we'll um, I'll answer more some more questions while it's going. So we'll just do sudo mass scan dash p one six five five three. Whoops, 
Uh, let's do rate of a thousand dash e ton zero. What's the IP address? 10, 10, 13, 46. 10, 10, 13, 46. Whoops. Oh, I typed my password. All right. And we're all, all good. So let's leave that running for a little bit. Um, yeah, flexing the Vim muscles, yeah. The, uh, I don't know, I, I just like Vim. I've been using it for a long time, so. You gotta use what you, what you like, I suppose. That's the, uh, that's the trick. Ah, so I'll just call out some of the subs. So, Skynet 1991, uh, Thank you for the sub, much appreciated. Um, and Wildfire. And Skynet 1991. So it was the original Terminator film, 91. I thought it was 1993. This came up in our Halloween quiz, but I can't, uh, I can't remember off the, uh, off the top of my head. Um, all right, so this, this question here, um, you should ask Tiberius tomorrow on his stream because he'll give you. Um, but basically, you can break DBs and stuff depending on how the application is running. Um, or one equals one is not necessarily a safe injection. So if you're working on production systems, you should be careful when using it, uh, if that makes sense. Um, let me flip back to messages. Oh, 1984. Jesus, that's old. Wait, somebody's, you're saying 1984, you're saying 1991. Which one? Which one? Um, but yeah, same, same thing here. Um, so all one equals one is a little bit more dangerous uh, to use. Obviously, if you're doing a CTF, then hey, go nuts. But, um, but you might break something. And you can use and one equals one and one equals two to like induce like logic issues to see, and then you can see the the behavior of the application to see whether you have um, uh, whether you have uh, injection or not. Because basically, we just want to be able to understand whether the application is behaving differently based on our, our injection uh, inputs. Um, all right, let's keep scrolling down oh yeah happy diwali to all my friends who celebrated and had uh, enjoyed your diwali festival hope you had a good time um looks like we've got three seven three seven oh it's an awkward port number <laughs> to say it's it's not awkward thirty seven thirty seven zero um so let's just try this oh come on there we go um Let's just see whether this is the port that we're after. So we're just going to do this. Yeah, it looks like it is. And it was CMDev California. And oh no, <laughs> it's my worst nightmare. <laughs> PCAP files. Ah, <laughs> oh, OK. All right. OK. Well, we're in it now, so um, if I was just studying on my own, I'd just be like, terminate box, and I would never come back to it. But um, but we're on live stream, so uh, let's get uh, cmftp.s. I can't remember the um, commands to download everything. Is it wget, and then you can do like star dot star? Can't remember. Um, and then get cmhttp one dot pcapng. Hopefully, it's switching to um, uh, what's an ASCII mode to download these rather than oh, fail to open file. Hold on, I'm just going to copy and paste. Oh, sorry, get not w get. I always forget the FTP commands. Did I get the first one? Yeah, we did. Okay. Okay, let's do this. Let's uh, let's dive into um, into Wireshark. So, wire, whoops. If 
we can spell that. I can't even spell wire shark. Uh, CM. Let's try the FTP logs first. We'll just have a quick scroll through. We'll do a quick pass of each to see whether there are any quick wins. Um, but Goss is bringing back nightmares. Okay. I can't look at PCAPs and talk at the same time. Apologies. It's a weakness of mine. This is just anonymous, anonymous, login successful. Oh, wow. Could we have just logged in as anonymous, anonymous and stolen these files anyway? Maybe we didn't need those creds after all. Okay, I don't see anything too exciting in that one. Let's try and have a look at the next one. We might have to come through and, and like do it in a more of a fine to tooth comb, but um, I like to give things a quick pass first to just check for like um, low hanging fruits. Um, so let's have a quick look at HTTP. What is this? Test cat. Oh, this is testing McAfee's stuff. Mm, nothing too interesting in there. Okay, let's give the last one a quick go. Otherwise, we're in for a long night of reading peak apps. <laughs> uh, let's take a look. Oh, hello. We have a post request here. All right. So it looks like we've got more creds here. So, I mean, we can come into this and then like follow the stream. And yeah, post index. So here we've got the username Valley Dev and the password is photos1234. So let's grab this. And let's never touch Wireshark ever again. <laughs> no, no disrespect to, to, to Wireshark. It's just, oh, no, I've, it's not on my clipboard. Um, what was it? Valley Dev? Oh, and it was like photo something. Um, no disrespect to those who, who use Wireshark and anything like that. It's just I, I've spent a lot of time doing Capture the Flag where I've spent too many hours trawling through PCAP files, trying to understand them. And I just, you know, just don't understand them. So, you know, it's all, it's all good. I jest mostly. Nothing wrong with Wireshark. Wireshark's all good. Wireshark's my friend. I just have nightmares about my friend. Uh, okay. All right, now we can close Wireshark, and we're we're good. Uh, we might have to come back to these. We don't know. We'll we'll see. Um, so I suppose what we want to try first is let's see if we can SSH in with this. So SSH Valley Dev at this, and then let's cat these notes. Yes, paste. Aha, and we're in. Yes, we got a shell. All right, part one, section one complete. And we have a user flag. That's it, that's what we need. The grind to top 1% is, well, we're slightly closer, ever so slightly closer. And yeah, that's it. Ah, oh, we need like a, a we're in, you know, meme thingy. I need like a soundboard of cool hacker stuff. That's what I need. Uh, so we can, uh, I don't know, just play it for fun. Um, so I'm just checking back in. Um, 
<laughs> Sharks are friends, not tools. <laughs> Fish are friends, not food. Um, any good books for any good book for starting and pen testing and Linux in general? Uh, I mean, I think there are a few good books out there, but honestly speaking, I feel like the best content our um, our industry has on offer is not generally found in books because uh, publishing a book is a real palaver uh, and keeping them up to date is also a real pain. Uh, and so I think uh, we have our resources tend to be more on like, yeah, blogs and videos and try hack me rooms and hack the box stuff and, and things like this. So um, I would I would definitely look at the paths over over a book, I think, in my um, I do have some books and I've read some good ones. I just I don't think if I was to start again, I would not tell myself I wouldn't recommend myself any books uh, to start with. If that if that makes sense, yes, Rodney is spot on. We need a we're in jingle. This is this is what we need. That's my task for for next week. Uh, this box is called Valley. Uh, it's on it's on Try Hack Me. So if you want to check it out, um, by all means, spin it up, and we're we're all good. Um, do, 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 let me keep scrolling down. Are there any resources for fixing? With a, do, 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 do. Yeah, so like I showed before, um, Active Directory, or sorry, adsecurity.org. Um, and there are a lot of other blue team resources uh, as well. Um, and I think, I mean, I've never, I don't think I've ever used Let's Defend, but that's like a blue team training site. Uh, and of course, there are also resources for secure development and things like that. Um, so, I mean, I know that our streams are mostly focused on pen testing and offensive security, but, um, but of course, yeah, there is plenty of blue stuff, uh, out there as well, for sure. Um, all right, let's, uh, hey, just a guy, how's it going? Nice of you to drop in. Um, how do we want to proceed? Okay, so we're Valley Dev, um, and let's do a little bit of manual uh, enum first, just to see what's happening on this box. And then, and then we'll pull in Linby's uh, if we need to. I'm just gonna have a quick look around. That's quite sus. Ooh, an elf file, wonderful. Okay, uh, so looks like we might need to become Valley because we're Valley Dev at the moment. So we're this user here, but this user Valley has this Valley Authenticator executable, which you know isn't a default file. So we're doing a CTF, so we should definitely check it out. Um, and then there's CM Dev. And then no, we can't get in there. Uh, our home directory doesn't have much in it. So there's nothing in opts. Uh, let's go into var .html. We didn't even look at this pricing stuff. Yeah, this is web stuff. Nothing too exciting, I don't think. Um, okay. How do we become um, Valley? Let's see. Let's come into home. This is an elf file, so let's try. Oh, we don't have strings. Okay, let's try... First, first we have PCAP files and Wireshark, and now we might have to dive into a little bit of reverse engineering. We'll see. Um, let's pull this down and take a, cl uh, a closer look at it. So, which Python 3, 
So Python 3 dash m hp dot server eighty eighty one, and then let's come here, and let's just w get what's the IP address? Copy this eighty eighty one slash valley authenticator. All right, so we have it here. Um, I don't want to run it just in case like it locks me out or does something crazy. Um, but we can strings valley authenticator. Oh gosh, that's really long. Uh, I don't really want to look through all of that. Um, Excuse me. So I'm just using the strings um, binary to try and pull out um, like bits of strings, uh, like no things out of the application uh, in case it has like hard coded uh, credentials or something. This could be like part of a flag. Um, something is your user name. It's all kind of broken up because obviously it's a combine, um, combined compiled file. This looks like a hash, maybe. This looks like a partial hash, maybe. Um, let's take a look at this, because that looks like MD5 to me. So if we come over to here, just come over to crack station. Whoops, I can't type. I feel like whenever I'm like, hey, let's go to crack station, it, it does not sound like what it's meant to be. It sounds like a marketplace for something completely different, but um, but it's okay. We're just going to use the R to crack a hash if we can. Can we use Ghidra? <laughs> not today. <laughs> Honestly, my reverse engineering skills are terrible. Um, so maybe I'll do some stuff on it at some point, but... You, you don't want to see me struggling through um, stuff like that. It's it's not it's not pretty because <laughs> I'm always like, you know, trying to follow things and being like, oh, I've seen this pattern before. I compiled something. It's like something completely different. Um, yeah, my reverse engineering skills are subpar, unfortunately. Um, but it looks like it's found it. MD5, Liberty123. Um, I'll try and get a guest on um, who, who is... Uh, an experienced reverse engineer at some point, uh, for sure. Um, but to be honest, like, you know, having done a lot of like pen testing and web app pen testing, I never need reverse engineering or I've never needed it, uh, in my, in my day-to-day -day work ever. Like the only time I've done reverse engineering is for CTFs. And so, and that doesn't mean it's not useful because of course there's a whole world of research, um, uh that that it opens up to but for i think general day-to-day -day pen testing and web app pen testing is not um it's not necessarily needed um can i show the graph again yeah so i grabbed for pass and then i did before and after of 10 lines each so um this is where it picked up pass and then usually especially with strings um you want to check before and after your matched string this is also useful in log files if you if you just grab for a single line you might have like multiple lines for like a single log, so you can um, you can go uh, up and down, uh, for example. Uh, so yeah, I think this is uh, oh dash c ten. Does that do like both directions, or does this is that just like a thing that breaks everything? Aha! Even quicker, saving me at least. 80 milliseconds, <laughs> I think. I mean, in a, in a, in a race that's, you know, in a Formula One race, that's, that's a long distance. Uh, time is everything. I totally agree. No, I remember this. This is nice. Um, instead of doing both before, after I'm all about, uh, all about efficiency. All right. So let's dim our notes and then we have another password, which is Liberty one, two, three. So every time I see the word Liberty, I think of Deus Ex. Because I think there was like some one of the secret codes in the game was like Liberty or something. I can't remember. Um, let's see if 
it is Valley's password. So Sue Valley. Yes. And we're now Valley. Okay, so that's Privesk number one. Um, it's a little tricky if you're not used to. Um, I think if if you haven't seen this trick before with like strings, um, because also the box is marked easy, right? So if we do get a binary, uh, I know that it's not going to be some crazy uh, difficult task because the box is marked easy. So once again, it's like using your um, using my CTF uh, antenna to to understand which rabbit holes to avoid and which ones uh, to go into. Um, as soon as I see something like this on an easy box, it can only be a number of things, right? So um, it could have been a basic overflow uh, for sure, 100%. Um, but in this case, we got lucky with strings. The other thing I would look out for is um, uh, if it's pulling in a binary but doesn't use the full path. So if it's doing like ping, for example, but it's not like user slash bin slash ping, and then we can put a ping binary in, in somewhere else and then run it as like roots, um, then that's that's also another common one for like easy medium boxes. So um, we're always kind of like looking at um, uh, these kinds of uh, these kinds of uh, uh, attacks that are suitable for the uh, the difficulty range that we're working on. All right, back to square one. Um, let's see what's in Valley's uh, home folder. Ooh. What's this exp there? Mm, what is that? Oh, it's empty. Dope. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in there, but this might be generated by something that's running. Ah, uh, uh, maybe this is a side project. Uh, side project like a byproduct of this script here, which is running every minute um, by the looks of it. Uh, so let's take a look at this. Yeah, this is okay. So roots is running this, uh, this file with Python three once every minute. Uh, as we can see from from crontab, and I checked the crontab because we I saw this exp directory. I'm not sure what this is, and so I thought maybe something is running uh, that is is spitting this out. Uh, so like sometimes you'll get something that's like backup.sh or something like this, uh, and uh, this is uh, this is looks like this is the way. Um, so specify. It's nice that they've commented all their code, <laughs> so we can. Uh, we can go through it. Um, do, 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 do. Oh yeah, if you missed it, let me let me show you again. So we we came back. We basically just grepped for um, pass, and this is a MD5 here, and then we just basically dropped MD5 into Crack Station, uh, and it, it cracked it for us. Of course, we could have used Hashcat or John the Ripper or something like this. But if if I see a bunch of things and I'm like, oh, I just want to quickly test it, um, then CrackStation is a bit easier. Obviously, if you're working on like, you know, a client's uh, sites and you manage to steal some hashes, don't go throwing them into like CrackStation or third party, um, uh, third party services, crack them locally, make sure that you protect your customer data. But for CTFs, it's not a big deal. And quite often, if you're really stuck on a CTF, sometimes just Googling a hash We'll, we'll give you answers. And yeah, as you can see, we've got a few a few answers here already. So um, it's a nice little CTF trick that you can uh, you can try, uh, which is cool. Um, where were we? Okay, so we're here. So hold on, let me read the script for a second. For I in range one to seven, so this is gonna go one to six because range, you know, uh, goes one two three four five six. You have to give the plus one at the end. Um, image path is slash photo slash p um, with the string of i. So like one two three four five six dot jpeg with its open read encode it. Output it as a dot 
ENC file, which I presume stands for encrypted, even though it's just base64. Uh, yeah, and then, and then write it. Okay, so we can't write to this file. So if you look here, um, it's owned by root and the group is root. So root has read, write, execute. We can read and execute it and we can read and execute it. Um, looking at it, I can't see a way where we'd be able to feed it some malicious inputs to create a uh, problem with the system that could like prove us. For example, if it was writing to like um, files in the system that would then run or checked by a user or something else, we could then maybe we could think about, okay, how did, how is our input processed? And then where is it saved to? And then how is that output processed? And consider like an attack chain at that point. The only thing that I think we probably need to consider is this base64. We could try and hijack this library potentially. So let's see if we can find this on the system. Um, so let's do find slash um, dash name base64 and then let's send uh, this to dev now. Ah, uh, is that right? This is the binary base64. Uh, Python modules are all .py files, so let's try base64.py, if I recall. Yeah, symlink might be the way to go, for sure, if we can trick it into running our malicious file instead of, um, instead of our file, instead of the, uh, the legitimate one. Um, let's see. Valley admin. Okay. So this is also a little bit suspicious. So this module, this Python module, uh, is owned by root, but the group is Valley admin. Haha. <laughs> We're also Valley admins. Did not know that. Um, so... Yeah, the group here can read, write, and execute. So we can modify this. So I think what we're going to do is bim paste here. Oh no, what happened? Ah, uh, we don't have vim. What? Let's try nano. Ugh, evil nano. <laughs> All right, let's... Uh, import os and then do something like os.system like this and then we could test this but i'm just gonna chmod i'm pretty sure this is the way um plus x bin bash come on what are you doing alex plus ash so we want to add a sewage bit to um bin bash so that um uh we can run it with the dash p privilege flag uh, and it will run it as root uh, with, so just the same as like any other sewed bit and you just have to add the privilege flag. Um, and then hopefully save, and hopefully we don't break all of Python. All right, we have to wait a minute for this to, um, to come up and uh, let's see. No, so this was um, this was all in Python. Uh, yeah, I could um, do a reverse shell, but that requires more like more messing around. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And uh, maybe it's not working. I have to wait a whole minute. Has it been a minute yet? I think I typoed something. Oops. Uh, import os os dot system chmod plus slash bash uh, slash bin bash. Okay, that looks okay to me. Oops. Oh, there we go. It's done it. Yes. Yes, we have the red. 
And we're brutes. Okay, that was that wasn't too bad. So this is um, uh, quite a common uh, quite a common privesque where the um, what's it called? The module is imported, but it's it's not very well protected. And then of course the um, we're dropping our malicious code into the uh, base64 module and then this is being used in in the main script this isn't very common you'd have to go out of your way to configure this attack if that makes sense um it's i i don't think i've seen this outside of um outside of ctfs but yeah i could use watch but yeah i'm lazy i just i just keep <laughs> I keep, I can just keep pressing. It's only one minute. It's all, it's all good. Um, yeah, all good. Um, so I only have two gigs of RAM. Yeah, my my terminal history is gonna like fill up all of my memory, uh, and then and then it's gonna die, uh, for sure. Um. Yeah, we had a we had a cron job running every minute, which is being run by root. So uh, so all good. I feel like everybody in the chat was doubting me while I was sitting waiting for it, but now it happened. So so we're good. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to scroll up back to when before I was just being stupid and like uh, pressing up and enter, up and enter, up and enter. Um, Nano will always save you from Vim. Oof. Oof, all you nano lovers. That's it's it's not the way. Nano is evil. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a t shirt that says I don't know, something like get out nano. Um for sure. <laughs> this is um if you write echo nano and output it to Vim, we'll see what happens. Maybe Vim just explodes or something this, like this. Um, all right, so let me see. Where are we? Yes, there's a roots.txt. That's what I wanted. And let me just submit this. Nice. And we solved this room. All good. Um, oh, coding in nano. That's brave, I, I would say. There are some good, like, um, there's some good um, command line um, IDs. Like, um, I don't have it installed at the moment, but... Micro is not bad. Hold on. If I install it quickly. Oh, it's going to take forever. Why are you so slow? Yeah, my, I actually quite like Mousepad. It's kind of like uh, the Linux equivalent of Notepad, which is quite nice. Um, so if we micro our notes here, so you get like a a usable IDE with with text highlighting and stuff like this, um, and it has like standard um, like you Control S, Control Q, and stuff like that. So micro is not bad. It's nice and like you know if I don't want to pull up Visual Studio Code to like look through a file, I'll run it in micro usually. So that's um, this is pretty nice. Um, all right, so let me answer a few more questions before we, we finish up. We finished that box weirdly quickly. I thought it was going to take us a lot longer than that, but, um, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. Um, oh, here we go. I need help pivoting and proxy chains. Uh, to be honest, every time I need to pivot, I just Google <laughs> and I look at blocks on to remind myself how to do it. Uh, and then I just follow the blog exactly step by step. Um, honestly, I never really go more than a few, a few, um, a few hops to be honest, because otherwise it becomes a bit of a bit of a pain. But there's some, there's some really good blog posts. Um, and also there's a course. Ah, oh, no, it's being uh, the movement and 
pivoting course, I think, is being taken off the TCM Academy, but hopefully there'll be something else uh, in the future uh, for sure. Um, do I think red teaming will be replaced by AI in the next five years? Definitely not. Uh, do I think that some penetration testing will be supplemented by AI? Definitely will. Um, but no, uh, it's, it's nowhere near the skill level of a seasoned red teamer, unfortunately. Uh, and I've seen some demos. I've been to the conferences um, and I've seen uh, AI tools, uh, AI integrated tools or AI powered uh, red teaming tools. And honestly, uh, I haven't seen anything impressive yet. Pretty sure I could write a script that's better still because they're just, I don't know, AI hallucinates too much. I think that's the, um, the main problem. Um, let me scroll back to to the chat quickly. What are the rules on streaming boxes? I think you can do anything on TriHack Me. I think it's fine, uh, at least as far as I know, uh, because it's like the it's not like um, they don't like retire boxes like on on Hack the Box. There's no live uh, like scoreboard and, and retiring machines. And to be honest, it's all just a fallacy anyway, because um, even when you're doing a box on, on Hack the Box, like you're searching for something, uh, like a version of something you found, and you'll just find write-ups anyway. So honestly, the, the leaderboards, um, I think, are kind of meaningless. There's, there's no way you can stop write-ups and leaks. So it's just unfortunate, the, uh, the world we live in. Uh, you can't ever stop cheaters. Um, but that doesn't mean that it can't be used as a great learning tool. Uh, and to be honest, the knowledge that you gain is worth way more than any point value or, or whatever else. So from that perspective, it's still an amazing tool. But from a competition perspective, you know, what's the point <laughs> if people are just going to cheat? So... Um, do, 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 do. What are my thoughts on the Maldev courses? I haven't taken any, uh, unfortunately, so I can't give you um, I can't give you any any insight here because yeah, uh, I've I've not seen any of the contents or or reviewed any, so um, unfortunately, yeah, uh, sorry, I can't answer your question here. Um, do, 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 do. G edit is also nice. No, is it? Is it really? Somebody's going to be like, Emacs is the best next. In fact, my colleague Shin, he, he was really into that. And nah, nah. Just, just use Vim. You're fine. You're all good. Yeah, I think this is uh, spot on, basically. And I don't think, like, uh, I think you should take tools and use them. I, it's a very powerful tool, and you should learn to harness that and stay ahead of the game for sure. But I don't think we need to be worried about it replacing us um, at all, to be honest. So um, this is probably the best advice I've seen today. Um, learn to use AI rather than fighting it, for sure, 100%. Oh, I really love Limpies. Yeah, Limpies is great. Um, I love running. I actually, for some reason, find reading Limpies quite relaxing. <laughs> it's such a weird feeling. But scrolling down through it, just, I don't know, maybe it's quite nostalgic, that's why. Um... So this box is, it's tagged as easy, but I would say it's like easy medium. Uh, I think there's a couple of challenges in here that are beyond what should be in an easy box, but I, it really depends on the person. Um, you know, it depends on what you're good at, it depends what you've seen before. Um, ranking boxes is actually really, really difficult. Uh, the box I submitted to try hack me, I ranked it as hard uh, because I know that a lot of people are going to really struggle uh on a particular aspect of it um and in my my opinion <laughs> the most realistic aspect of the box i know that everybody is going to struggle on that uh, but they said hey let's put it to medium and i was like 
it's your call. You you see you see what happens. Um, but if a load of complaints come in, say hey, it's impossible. Then um, I wanted to tag it as hard. So this is my this is my disclaimer on on stream, <laughs> saying apologies. But I wanted it to be to be difficult. No, I wanted it to be realistic, and unfortunately, it turned out to be quite hard because it's realistic. So. Um, but yeah, hopefully my um, box will be up soon on Try Hack Me, so it should be should be all good. Uh, yeah, if you're on the YouTube, um, just go to the Cybermentor YouTube, and um, oh yeah, I can see your tag as YouTube. If you just go to the live tab, um, they're all they're all up there, so so you'll see all good. All right, let's take three more questions. Uh, Ooh, ouch, this looks painful. So OSCP bans me with no proof. I only have CCNA certificates, any career advice? Um, I think it's the same as like anything else. So if you're lacking in one area, so it sounds like, you know, you're not able to get any offsec certs, maybe try and replace that with a different certification and then that's it. And then you're all good. Don't have to worry about it anymore after that. So, but it's the same, like, you know, if you don't have experience, for example, I tell people, okay, how can you replace experience? What can you do instead? You know, you can do side projects, you can contribute to open source, um, uh, open source stuff, you can uh, do certifications, you know, it's all just like a, a juggling act, right? So if you have everything, perfect, but this is the real world. Nobody has everything, um, except for a few very very lucky and smart and hardworking people, but like the real people, all of us mortals, um, we have to try and figure out what's the best way forward. So yeah, just try for something else. Um, you know, try PMPT or something like this. Um, let me keep scrolling down. I mean, I can't really, I can't really answer this without sounding really big-headed, can I? <laughs> it's uh, just go with any. I think, I mean, there are so many, there's so many really good content creators now. I think, like a few years ago, there was basically there wasn't very much in terms of the content creation space. There are, of course, some great content creators, and still are, but now there's more and more um, to choose from. So this is, um, this is a good problem to have. Um, but you could always, you know, you can tune in here and then, and that's all you need. <laughs> no, I'm joking. You should check out the others as well, uh, for sure. Honestly, I don't watch many live streams, so, um, I'm not sure which ones I'd recommend, but of course, uh, uh, there are lots of great, uh, people out there sharing their knowledge and experience, so. Um, all right, a couple more questions. So is Burp Suite good for beginners? Yes, uh, obviously for web app pen testing, um, Burp Suite's like a key tool. So the sooner you start using it, uh, the better, in my opinion. Um, I use it pretty much every day. So um, like that's, there you go. <laughs> the proof is in the pudding. Um, you know, if, if, if it was a tool, like, I don't know, something that I used every two, three months, I'd be like, ah, you know, pick it up when you need to, but Burp Suite, I think, is a cornerstone application for um, for web app pen testing. Uh, just the same as things like, you know, Nmap's a really, really important tool for um, for pen testing as well. So definitely one of those key ones uh, out there. Um... Is there, is there anywhere to do some work on the side for cyber people a bit like Upwork? I'm not sure what Upwork is. Do you mean like contracting? What is Upwork? The world's marketplace. Oh, yeah, there is. Um, and in fact, I think um, on Upwork there is. Isn't there like loads of cybersecurity people on, on Upwork? Hold on. Let's, let's check this out. Why uh, my VM is so slow. I like how I write penetration testing and it's like Python developer. It's like, no, 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 that's not, that's not what I, that's not what I searched for. 
worst uh, search AI suggestion. It's probably not AI, that's why. Uh, there you go, penetration testing. Uh, Cyber, uh, Cypress, Selenium, penetration testing. Uh, yeah, there's loads. Oh, my malware remover. Interesting. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know which sites are good and which ones are, like, popular or, or where I've, I've never tried to do anything like this before, but, but it definitely exists, uh, for sure. Um, all right. Um, let's take one more question. Sometimes I watch two videos at once. <laughs> How? How do you do that? Um, you can like maybe if you have like you know old headphones where you'd get the bass in one ear and you'd get like the um the lead or like the all the treble in the other ear you can have like you plug yourself into two streams and have one um uh one one in one ear and one in the other uh if that makes sense yeah freelancing like fiverr i think this is um uh, this is definitely, uh, this is the one to go. Um, awesome. All right. Um, let's take this one last question then. So currently, I currently work at cybersecurity company, but as a support engineer, what do you think the best steps for pro uh, progression into more of a developer role? So do you mean more like a security engineer or like web app? development or like pure engineering this is the question um what i would say is if you already work for a cybersecurity company try and get involved in as many projects as you can make sure you build out as much experience as you can and then if you can get a certification that's that's definitely your your best bet and then hopefully opportunities will um will uh will crop up for you but yeah sounds like you're in a in a good spot uh for sure all right so that's it for today's stream. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Sorry, it's a little bit quicker than usual, but tomorrow, um, special guest with Tiberius top 50 bug crowd, um, bug bounty hunter. So that will be very exciting. So, you know, put all of your bug bounty questions into, uh, into tomorrow's stream, and I'm sure you'll get some excellent answers and I will catch you all same time next week. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of the week.